Black business owners, what are the top three things that you need to know in order to run a successful business? We're going to talk about that in today's video. So what's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success consultant. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the top three things that you need to focus on as a black business owner in order to run a successful business. Now, what are the top three things that goes into making a black business successful? What separates a black business from everybody else's business on the face of the earth? Well, as many of you know, we get many stereotypes about a black business. We get told that our businesses lack quality. We get told that our businesses lack the right products, that we don't have the things that we promise to others to fulfill. So in today's video, we're going to break the mold. If you're watching this video, you're going to learn the top three things that you need to have to not only have a great black business, but a great business in general. This is how you're going to thrive. Rule number one, if you want to be able to be successful as a business owner, especially in the black community, you got to know how to properly have a boss mindset. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Oh, well, you know, this is just another rap video talking about how to be a boss. No, this is not what this is talking about. Having a boss mindset is the transformation from you being an everyday, typical nine to five worker and thinking like a nine to five worker to transitioning yourself into the mindset of an owner. OK, I want you to understand something right now. You may be a very hard worker. You may be very talented. You may be very good at what it is that you do. You may have honed your craft. But just having skill and talent and creativity alone is not sufficient to being a business owner. As an owner, your mindset, your schedule, all of the principles that goes into you being successful is totally different from that of a nine to five worker, okay? So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail. Okay, so at a nine to five, your nine to five is based upon your own set skill, right? So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say that you're a brother right now and you're really good at being able to cut hair and you're thinking about having your own barber shop. Well, here's the question. Is there a difference between being a barber versus being the owner of a barber shop? Those are two different things. I don't know if you know that, but those are two different things, right? If you're a barber, the only thing that you're focused on primarily is getting clients and cutting heads. You're focused on your skill. But when you are an owner, your focus is on actually making your barbershop run. Ha get, getting a series of good barbers, not just any barbers, good barbers outside of yourself. Maybe you're training other barbers on how to be great barbers. You're, maybe you're showing them how to have great customer service, right? You're enforcing your own barbershop rules. Maybe you're engaging with all of the clients that come into the barbershop a little bit different than the barbers themselves might do, right? Because there's a little bit of a difference between the brother that owns the barbershop versus just your everyday barber, okay? Totally different mindset. When you're operating as an owner, one of the things that you got to focus on is the system and the process, okay? When you are an owner, you focus a lot more on the process of things and the system rather than the skill. Now, let's take another example. Let's say that you're a really good cook. You always throw down a slamming meal. Everybody loves whatever it is that you got to cook, whether it be burgers, whether it be soul food, whether it be another cuisine like Mexican or Indian, whatever the case may be. Let's say that you're really, really good in the kitchen. Well, is you being good at one particular dish the exact same type of information and understanding that you need to have in order to be a restaurant owner, right? Because when you go into a restaurant, it's not just the dish 
that makes a good restaurant a good restaurant, right? You got to have some type of good ambiance, nice environment. You have to have good waiters, good waitresses. You've got to be able to know how to have folks that are busting tables so it doesn't look dirty. Maybe you might think about good Yelp reviews, right? Since a lot of reviews about your restaurant will be documented online. So the skill that you may have had that might have got you into the cooking industry is not enough to run a full-fledged restaurant business, okay? This is one of the primary challenges that many of us have when it comes to successfully being a black business owner. Many of us think that because of the fact that we are equipped with a certain skill, where you might be very good at that skill, you may be one of the best employees at the job, right? But when you work as an owner, as a CEO, inside of your own company, when you start and found a business, it's not just your skill that you're going to be focused on, okay? So what I want you to do right now is, I wanna take you out of just the craftsman mentality, okay? I understand that you have a craft, and it may not be as a barber, it may not be, you know, in the restaurant industry, it may be in music, it may be in entertainment. It may be in something else. What I'm saying is, if you want to successfully transition from being a nine to five worker that only, only focuses on their skill at the job, because that's all they get paid to do. Think about that. When you get hired for a job, you only get paid primarily for one set job. And you might be good at that one set job, but you got to understand that now that you're transitioning from nine to five worker to owner, now you're going to wear every hat that goes into that business. So not only are you going to just be cooking the dishes, guess what? You're going to be marketing those dishes. You're going to be making sure that your kitchen has a good operations management setup, making sure that you have dishes coming out on time. You might have to be teaching other chefs how to be able to get things out on time. You've got to be able to interact with customers. You've got to be able to pay your employees. You've got to be able to make sure that your finances in your business and bookkeeping is in the right place. To make a long story short, you've got to be able to wear a lot more hats. And one of the primary issues that we have in the black business owner community is many of us, not all of us, many of us have been destroyed for a lack of knowledge when it comes to how to effectively run a business. Why? Because many of you may be a first generation business owner. Maybe your moms or your pops didn't own their own business. Maybe your grandma or grandpa didn't run their own business, but now you want to take the jump out of the nine to five and start your own business. But you got to understand it's a totally different world. Your work ethic is not the same going from nine to five to an owner. Your priorities are not the same from a nine to five to an owner. The way that you solve problems in a day is not the same from being a nine to five worker to being an owner. And I can tell you, having successfully done both, I worked in corporate America for years as an IT project manager, where as a nine to five worker, I operated in one set role, managing projects and getting them completed with on-time delivery. But when I started taking my own skills to build up my own business, showing us how to be successful and thrive professionally, there were so many other things that I had to be good at other than IT. I had to be able to get in front of a camera and speak. I had to know how to be able to present myself and market myself, okay? There's so many other variables. So one of the things that I want you to focus on is maximizing your learning. Okay, this is extremely important. I want to make sure that you're listening to me good. Don't think that just because of the fact that you're good in a skill, that that means that you have what it takes 
to know how to run a full-blown business. This is the mistake that so many of us make. Yes, you might be employee of the month. Yes, you might be good at what it is that you do, but you actually need to learn how to be able to run a business from top to bottom. Because running a business, you're connecting the dots from A to Z. When you're doing the nine to five, you're just only one dot in a part of a bigger picture, okay? You're only one letter in the alphabet. So start thinking from a boss mindset, okay? Now let's talk about the second thing. And for those of you um, that wanna be able to learn more about this, I got a link for you right up under this video and it's going to show you how to be able to build your empire from scratch. This is a message that I want, we need as a community to go throughout the world. There's so many videos that we're watching every single day on YouTube that's not doing nothing for us in terms of helping us get ahead in life, in terms of helping our family, helping our kids, helping ourselves, leaving something behind for the next generation to follow. I am trying to give you everything that you need to help us build our community all for free. And so in this second point, the second thing that you need to know on top of the boss mindset is a raw understanding, a very, very solid raw understanding of the use of capital and credit, okay? So again, one of the primary reasons why it's hard for us as black business owners to get going in running a successful business is because we have not always had generations in our immediate family that we could look to to say, okay, well, my uncle ran a successful business, now I'm gonna run mine. My grandpa ran a successful business, and now I'm gonna run mine. And that's no disrespect to those that came before us. This is just real talk about our situation. A lot of the things that we're learning today, many of these things are being learned first generation. So you don't have old money like other communities got. You don't have all of these grandpas and grandpas and aunties and uncles that's kicking you all this knowledge on how the game of business is played like some other communities may have. That's why it's that much more important for you to be a learner than everybody else because we're coming from a lower position of knowledge, okay? The second thing that you got to be able to understand is a barrier to helping us get started in business is lack of access to capital and credit, okay? So think about this. All businesses, right, especially small businesses, 80% of all small businesses fail within five years' time due to a lack of cash flow, okay? I'm going to say that again. 80% of all small businesses in America fail within five years. Why? Due to a lack of cash flow. In other words, where's your capital? Where's your money? Where's your finances? I know you don't have inheritance money where somebody's handing you $100,000 to start up a business. I know you don't have no, you ain't no trust fund baby. So it's gonna be harder in many cases to feel like you got what it takes to get going with getting a business off the ground because you may feel like you're disadvantaged because you don't have a lot of money. But one of my mentors in the black community that's an entrepreneur, Damon John, talks about the power of being broke. See, one of the biggest traps, and I'm gonna share this with you right now, one of the biggest traps is thinking that for every business, you need a business loan, okay? Because what happens when you get a business loan? Well, unbeknownst to many of us, when we go inside of a bank and we ask for a business loan, some of us get rejected right off the rip but for those of us that actually get business loans, one of the things that we gotta realize is those lenders who are loaning you money, whether you know it or not, they become stakeholders to your business. So what does that mean? If they're giving you money, they're pulling the strings. 
if they're giving you money on some level, they're going to want to call the shots. Because what could happen in a business loan that many people never tell you about, right? You see all this Hollywood living and everybody is driving in these fancy cars. Here's one of the things that people will never tell you about. If you take out a line of credit from the bank, the bank at any given time can call in that line of credit. So let's say that you get loaned $20,000, right? And you start spending up that 20 grand on the spot. You're buying equipment, you're buying materials, you're buying this and that. Maybe you even buy a brick and mortar. But yet you have no revenue being generated. You have no cash flow. At any given time, the bank can call in the loan so that way you have to pay the $20,000 back in full. You got to pay back the full amount of whatever it is that you got from that bank in full. And so what you got to be able to recognize is sometimes it's best to start with your own money. Sometimes, especially if you don't know how to start a business, especially if you have not started multiple businesses in the past successfully. If you're just getting started, but you want to get in the game, I highly recommend that you start small. Make your mistakes small. Don't make your mistakes with five figures in debt that you've taken out, six figures in debt taken out. Maybe a bigger business may come in time. Maybe your current business may grow into a larger entity. But as of right now, I'm telling you, this business loan stuff is a trap because you can find yourself owing them in full, but you don't even have any cash flow coming in. You don't have any revenue coming in. So if I'm in your shoes, you know what I'm going to do right now? Two things. One thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start the business small and I'm going to think about how can I get going for a thousand dollars or less. That's what you need to be thinking about right now. Okay. Set aside just a little bit of money to be able to get your foot in the door. Think about this. There's so many business tools that are available right now, all for free. Look at YouTube. This is a marketing opportunity that you get to market your business all for free. So do you need to pay for advertisements? Do you need to pay for things that are just going to take all this money from you, but you don't have no money coming in? When you first start off your business, you want to be able to start it with limited overhead until you start gaining clients and customers where you can take the revenue and reinvest. Sometimes we take out so much money or think that we need so much money because we want to be able to look like other people that have been in business the past 20 years. We want to look like the big corporations. We want to look like the McDonald's, but we don't got McDonald's money. We don't have billions of dollars. And guess what? Even McDonald's started with humble beginnings. Even McDonald's as a franchise only had one restaurant for decades before they ever branched out. And so you got to be willing to trust the process and go to long game, okay? If you're gonna be a successful black business owner, you gotta understand this ain't no short-term hustle. This is not a short-term play. Business is about the long game because we're creating something that we're going to be passing down to future generations. So let's make it worth it, right? Let's make it last. Start small, $1,000 or less, okay? And what I would do, you know how I would spend some of my first $1,000? Honestly, if I was you, buying the best business books that I could find on Amazon and buying the best business books on Amazon you, you need $50 or less. You don't even need $1,000, but just to start off, okay? Start educating yourself as to how the game is played, okay? Now, we've talked about capital for a little bit, okay? Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Well, what about credit? Here's one thing, and this credit discussion, I was motivated to speak on this by Jay-Z, when in his last album, he talked about one of the things that made other communities very successful 
which was the utilization of credit, okay? I, a lot of us, you know how they give us a bad rep in the black community. They say that we got bad credit. But what I could tell you personally is when I paid off $95,000 in student loans two years after graduating from Baylor University, I had excellent credit. And I kept on having excellent credit for years and years. I never let my credit go bad, okay? Now, you might be watching this video and say, well, damn, my credit is already bad. This is going to be the time where we start working on actually improving your credit, okay? Because if your credit is bad and you're trying to be able to start a business, like I said, you may feel like you're disadvantaged. Why? Because of the fact that maybe you don't have inheritance money to where you have the capital to start up a business and you might need to build yours from scratch. So guess what? It may come a point in time as you are building or growing your business where you may feel the need to start use, utilizing credit, okay? Now again, I don't advise you really go far on any type of debt as the business is first starting. However, as an emergency measure, you wanna make sure that you have credit that's in good standing. I recommend this especially if you plan on making the jump out of your nine to five into running your business full time, okay? That's one of the main recommendations that I can give to you. I would not use credit solely to just start up a business from scratch. You should be saving aside some money and you should be working with what you have. That's going to teach you to do more with less as you're growing your business. And that's really the essence of business, is it not? Making a profit expanding your margins, how to do more with less. These are principles that you can learn right now while you don't have a lot of money at play, okay? So when it comes to the subject of credit, we're not gonna use credit to be able to buy your very first purchase in business, but if you ever find yourself in a position where you're going to need to fall on credit if you fall on hard times, make sure that your credit isn't jacked up. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Make sure that your credit is in a good position that you've been building it up in advance because you never know when you may find yourself going through a slow month in your business and in order to sustain your business or yourself, you may need to utilize your business credit to get you by until the next round of sales, okay? One of the things I can tell you guys, not every month in your business is going to be a booming month, okay? Don't believe the hype. I know they make it look all easy on social media. Listen, not every month is just gonna be a, a, a skyrocket month. You're not gonna be got make it rain money every month. It's not gonna work like that. Some months are gonna be a little bit better than others just based upon buying behavior, right? So if you're in the electronics industry, imagine that you're, you know, you're a person that sells fireworks. Well, obviously you're gonna get a lot more sales probably in the summer than you would if it was April or if it was March, right? You gotta understand that every business has a certain type of seasonal aspect and flavoring to it, even if your business is open all year long, okay? So your capital and your credit is very, very, very important. Now, one of the things that I also recommend is you working your way out of debt as much as possible before you start a business. Why? It all goes back to what I told you before. 80% of all small businesses in America fail within the first five years due to a lack of cash flow. Now, what tends to happen? You tend to take out debt. You tend to spend more money than you're getting in in revenue. And then you end up going bankrupt. And one of the ways that you can end up going bankrupt is by owing a lot of people unnecessarily not just in your business finances, also in your personal finances. So if you wanna be able 
to maximize your cash flow. And cash flow, by the way, just means how much money you have available. Okay. If you're making a certain level of money, okay, that's good that you're making a certain level of money. But if it's going from this person to this person to this person to this person, well, what money do you have available to do the things that you need to do? So you need to free up some cash flow. And in order for you to be able to free up some cash flow, you've got to be able to stop owing other people money. Okay. Now let's move on to the third and final point. The third and final point that you want to think about as a black business owner that's going to thrive, you're going to break the mold. <laughs> you're going to put yourself, you're going to put your community on the map. You're going to do this for the culture. The next thing that you need to be thinking about is your business's positioning and price. Okay. Here's something that is extremely important. All businesses have some type of business model centered around their product positioning and their price. What does this mean? Ferrari positions itself differently than Kia. Lori's Steakhouse positions itself differently than Taco Bell. They're going for a different type of customer they package their products a different type of a way and they command different levels of price points. Now, this is very important for the black community. Why? Because you might have a very, very good business idea or you may be very skilled. But if you don't position yourself properly, it's going to be very hard for you to succeed and dominate. OK, positioning is very important. Here's one thing that I want you to think about. OK, a lot of times they say black people never buy from other black people. But I've personally found that to be somewhat of a myth. Why? Because I've been running my business successfully for years with scores of black clientele. And guess what? Many times when I work with my clients, I'm working at them at varying price points. So guess what? We all know in a black community, we got money. We all know that. You've all seen your guys with Jordans. You've seen them with iPhones. You've seen us with Benzes. You've seen us with the handbags. You've seen us buy expensive products. So don't feel like every product that you have to come out with has to be a rock bottom price because you feel as though nobody in the community will buy it. If you have positioned your product properly and it's delivering massive value, I'm telling you, somebody is going to buy it because if it's quality enough, price won't even be an issue. So let's talk about this even further. You know, there's a lot of you right now that's wondering, you know, should I start up a, a, a business and should it be a brick and mortar? Well, myself personally, this is my personal recommendation as an entrepreneur, a real estate investor, a best-selling author that's been doing what I've been doing for a number of years now, and I've been blessed, okay? I personally believe that there is a massive opportunity for black business owners to thrive in the online marketplace, in some cases better than in our local communities in the brick and mortar. Now, am I saying that in our communities, we should not have our own businesses in physical locations? Absolutely not. We definitely need to have a community that's structured, that's supporting our businesses where we are recycling our own dollars. But what I am saying is, in 2018, based upon where we're at right now financially, for many of you, before you set up a physical location, Start with an online location, right? It's a lot cheaper. Instead of you having to pay rent from month to month, you can do certain things online for free. And guess what? Maybe you're in a certain neighborhood right now where black businesses are not even being promoted like it should. So what happens if you feel like you're not garnering enough support in the black community to be able to get what you need to get? You know one thing that you can do to solve that? by having a online business 
that's positioned in front of the internet to people all across the globe. And guess what? Through target marketing, you're getting black people all across the world doing business with you, right? I got clients right now that are black folks living in London. I've had clients that are black folks in the Caribbean, on the East Coast, on the West Coast, down South. I've had black people from all over the world work with me and allow me to be able to render my services to them. Why? Because I position myself in front of them. And because of the fact that my product was online, I was able to actually reach a larger number of clients with a lower amount of capital. I had a lower amount of capital and I was able to go even farther. I had a lower amount of overhead and I was able to go that much farther, okay? So you can still do a physical brick and mortar and I have thoughts about setting up my own brick and mortar in due time. Right now I'm just involved in real estate, okay? I'm a real estate investor, I'm a landlord. But I want you to see the opportunities that you get when you position yourself properly. Don't just have a business where you have a certain skill and you think that the skill is just good enough to put you in front of anybody, right? You don't need to just talk to everybody when you're trying to promote your business because if you try to talk to everybody, you're talking to nobody. You need to think about what your proper positioning is and then secondly, you need to think about your price point, okay? Because one thing that I will say to all of you that are aspiring business owners, current business owners, you may feel like you're struggling, here's one bit of advice that I will give to you. You know, I've, I've worked with a lot of clients over the years, and these are all business owners that I work with as a business consultant, people that wanna start their businesses, grow up and scale their businesses to be able to get, you know, um, higher figure revenue. And one of the things that I always tend to notice is they always tend to think small in terms of their price points. Now, here's the thing. If you have a product or if you have a service that's at a lower price point, is it manageable with you having a low level of manpower in your company? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say right now that you are the burger guy. You're really good at being able to make burgers, right? And you have burgers at $5, okay? Just walk with me here. Your average cost of your burger is $5, okay? Now, let's say that you want to be able to make a annual income of $60,000 a year, right? Think about that. $60,000 a year, but what you're selling in your business is a $5 burger, right? Now, is it possible for someone to make $60,000 a year selling a $5 burger? Absolutely. However, there are complexities. There are challenges. Because you gotta sell a lot of $5 burgers to get to $60,000. You gotta sell a lot of burgers, man. You got to sell a lot of burgers, okay? If you were to just think about this, basic math, right? If you were to sell a thousand burgers, would you get to $60,000? No. You wouldn't even break four figures, okay? So you got to think about, okay, in order for that many burgers to even be cooked, that means you got to be able to have multiple cooks, but guess what else you might need to have? You might need to have multiple locations, Right? Why do you think that McDonald's has restaurants all over the world? Right? Franchise model. Why do you think that KFC has franchises set up all over the world? Is it just because of the fact that they just love their own brand so much they just want to be seen on every block? No, it costs money. The reason why they are franchised is because the only way that their business is going to succeed at this low of a price point is if they're selling it to millions of people around the world, is if they're selling it at a massive scale, okay? If you don't have a massive scale of people that you're gonna be doing business with, you may wanna be rethinking your price point 
if you want to be able to live and eat off of what it is that you do. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you want to do a hobby, then that's cool. But there's a big difference, brothers, between a hobby and a business. Okay? There's a big difference between a business and a charity. And sometimes you can just be giving away your products and services, and you might make a lot of people happy, but you don't even have enough money to pay the bills. Okay? So what I want you to think about is this. Okay? If you have low price, right? And this is just, I'm going to leave this basic. Like I said, if y'all want to be able to get more information on this, click the link below and I'm going to be able to work with you all for free showing you how to be able to set up your empire from scratch. Whether you're in debt, whether you're at a current job right now, whether you're looking for a job, how to be able to successfully transition yourself from not knowing too much about how to really grow up a business with debt to being able to get out of debt and making the transition into being a full-time entrepreneur and black business owner, okay? These are just two basic rules that I want to give to you in closing, okay? Low price, the only way for low price to work, right, is if you have a lot of people. Why does Walmart work in terms of being able to sell for low prices? because they're selling to a lot of people, okay? Flip side, higher prices, fewer people. Think about a Lamborghini, right? Think about a Bentley. Do they want everybody in the world to have one? Does BMW want everybody in the world to have one? No. Because guess what? If they did have everybody in the world have one, that's going to lower the value of what it is that they have to offer. That's going to make their cars a commodity. Ain't going to be no luxury about that if everybody got one, right? So they're not in the business of talking to everybody. But they know that there's a select few people that have the money that are interested in what they have to offer that are going to put up the right amount of money to keep them in business, okay? Now, when it comes to you, probably I would recommend you to be somewhere in between the two, okay? You don't have to sell the highest, most expensive product in the world unless you really got something that people want to pay for. If you got people something that people really want to pay for, well, then yes, the sky's the limit. But it's probably going to be somewhat of an in-between between your price point, competitively priced, right? Versus a rock bottom price. You're not going to be able to eat off of a low price point unless you have something that you can franchise and you already got people set up in all types of locations ready to work for you in a franchise. Okay. If it's just you and you're a one man show, do the math on your product, create a goal. Okay. Create a take home goal. How much money is it that you want to make? How much money do you want to walk away with at the end of the year if you made your business idea a real business, okay? Now, you take that amount, that annual income that you want to make, and then you divide that number, right? You divide that number by the cost of your product. How many products or units sold would you have to reach to hit that number? Maybe it's going to be a lot. And guess what else? We haven't even yet factored in taxes that you're going to have to pay in your business, operating expenses that you're going to pay in the business, as well as any reinvestment capital that you're going to put back in the business for your business to grow. All your business money ain't just going in your pocket, not if you want to have a successful business, <laughs> right? You're going to have to have your money budgeted in various areas, okay? So I'm just going through this exercise to show you that as a black business owner, there's things that we need to be on the lookout for, okay? We all know that we got exactly what it takes to be able to change the game, to be able to have the best businesses in the world, hands down. We've already had the greatest inventions known to man. We've already had the smartest thinkers on earth known to man. And now is the time for us to really take advantage of the business opportunities that are in front of us today. This is the best time in modern history to ever be a business owner.
And I want you to be courageous enough to really apply these principles into your business so that way you could take things to the next level, okay? So right now, what I want you to do is click the link. If you're ready to build an empire, if you're serious about moving forward, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Make sure that you, if you've already subscribed to this channel, make sure that you share this with a friend that can benefit from this. Be your brother's keeper because we need this information. We've not been taught this in our community. We've not been taught this at the school, okay? We've got to be able to help each other succeed. And if you're serious about empowering your community, I want you to take the lessons from this video, apply it, so one day I can share your success story too. Okay, so I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care and continue to support black owned businesses.